we have like a whole list of things we're going to talk about, but there's nothing else I can really say about what space is. Or what a plane is, or what a straight line is, or what a point is. So let's just go dive straight in and talk about areas, okay? And then we'll see how quickly we run into difficulties. And how quickly we run into difficulties talking about lengths. Maybe we'll start with lengths, and then we'll talk about volume. So that's interesting. So the first problem, as soon, if you, didn't, if you don't have Pythagoras' theorem, you don't have anything, and you're happy. Because there are no contradictions and no problems. But as soon as you have Pythagoras' theorem, they ran into a problem right away. And you know, it's a classical example. I can only repeat what others say. I, don't, I haven't really thought through exactly what their problem was. But they considered a 45-45-90 right, uh, right triangle, the isosceles triangle. And they realized that this psi, that the hypotenuse should be length such that when you square it, it becomes 2. So we now denote it by square root of 2. And then they said, okay, great. It's a, num it's a number such that when squared needs to equal 2. You guys agree with me? Because 1 squared plus 1 squared equals x squared. So x squared equals 2. It's the number such that when squared becomes 2. And then they said, okay, well, let's find that number. And their definition of number, as I imagine it, I never read or studied the original sources, and I don't trust writers who have, because they're historians and not mathematicians, and there's a big difference. I, that came, came across as arrogant, right? And, and better than you sort of way. I'm sorry about that, but it's kind of true. Um, yeah, so I don't know, but I imagine that it was rational numbers, fractions. And then they started looking for what fraction it is. Is it, th is it is it 3 over 2? No, it's a little less. Is it uh, 14 over 10 or 141 over 100? Uh, and they couldn't find it. And then they realized there can't be a number like that. So right away they had a length that's not a number. So now we overcame it. We, we now say, and I'll boil it down to the bare essential, we say square root of 2, root 2 is what we call it, is a number such that when squared equals 2. <laughs> and then not, nothing else, really. And you can think about, you know, all of the stuff that you've learned with sequences and limits and infinite sums and conversion theory, convergence, sorry, convergence, <laughs> convergence theory. Uh, but I think that's just digging yourself deeper into a hole. You're just replacing something simple you don't understand with more complicated things we don't understand. But notice how I'm comfortable with square root of 2, right? Because I've been using it, and the roof of my house hasn't collapsed yet, and the, I haven't seen planes falling out of the sky because of I don't understand what square root of 2 is. So it satisfies my criterion. I understand what it is, but there's a problem right away. And there's an even bigger problem. Uh, so we, call, we now call this number irrational when you encounter a number such as pi, which we will encounter in just a little bit. Okay, so let's solve uh, a couple problems. So maybe we don't know what this is, but can we can avoid talking about it and still solve some problems. For example, here's a problem. Suppose this is a square. I don't want to say one by one or of area one. In fact, as you can see, it's dangerous talking about lengths because you run into lengths that are not even a number. Yeah. So you try, I'm going to draw a better square, because you guys pay 70000 a year, and you deserve a better square. <laughs> okay, maybe you deserve the larger square, but you're getting some financial aid, right? So screw you, small square. Okay, maybe it's one by one, but I want to say it's whatever area it is. How would you construct a square whose area is double the area of this square? How do you construct a square? So I know the modern answer. Uh, measure this. Take a tape measure. Measure this. Multiply it by square root of 2. Right? And then draw a square with that length. You agree with me? I want a purer solution. I want a solution without a tape measure. I just want to limit myself, right? For arbitrarily. Life becomes more fun when you limit yourself. 
So we want to limit ourselves here. No tape measures, uh, no square roots of two, no calculators, just geometric, just geometric constructions. I'm going to take half a step back from this. Suppose I ask for a square four times the area. That's easy, right? Four times the area. I would just draw the same square four times. Ah, uh, you deserve a better square, $70,000. Uh, so yeah, quadrupling is very easy. See, just pure construction, no tape measure, no multiplication by two, no calculator, nothing, just a construction. What about doubling the square? That's a big question. How would you do it? Any ideas? Yeah, what would you do? Oh, let's see. I think, I think, you're, I think you're exactly on the right track. So four squares, right? Maybe it's even better a better expression than what I had in mind. Okay, four squares, we can do that, that's within the rules, and now? Is this what you mean? Ah, I missed it. That's the discount. <laughs> so do this. Right? So that's a square of twice the area. Can you see that? Because it has four halves in it. Yeah, pretty clever. So a modern person would say, of course, because this is square root of 2, and this is square root, and so the area of the square is square root of 2 squared, right? So that's good. So the square root of 2 can almost stay behind the scenes and never be mentioned, right? So I think the Greeks liked that idea, that we don't understand the square root of 2. It's not a number. That's a problem but we can kind of circumvent it a little bit. Okay, so that's doubling the square. So once we doubled the square, what next shape would you want to double? So, yeah, it's not fair because cube. You would want to double the cube, right? Like, what do we do? We have a cube. Let's find a cube of twice the volume, right? So that problem took a few extra thousand years before we realize that it's not possible if we limit ourselves to simple constructions like this. Yeah, and the thing I didn't mention, I, saw, I went off on a tangent with the straight lines. So the rules really are we can draw straight lines through two given points and circles with a compass, right? Because we can create a little compass, right? That's easy. You just do this. Put a needle here and a piece of chalk here. And then you can draw perfect circles. So we can only draw straight lines and circles, right? This, this does seem cleaner, right, than measuring and multiplying by square root of 2. So that's the game we're playing. <laughs>